pipe, electrician's metal tubing conduit, and in the end we got a plastic plug, could be a dot wooden dowel if you want it. Drill a little hole inside your electrical, kind of brass and copper tubing. Stick it in there, tighten down a screw on it and hold it in place. It contacts the electrode. Stick it in here. And uh, if we have negative electricity up here to the top of the coil. And from the bottom of the coil, we run a jumper wire from here to this little bolt which contacts the electrode, getting juice to the electrode. And the positive lead of your battery connects to the part. Is the polarity so, important? The polarity is critical. This has got to be negative up here, positive on the part. Okay, okay. So then we let it fall and hit the part. When it hits the part, you get a big spark. You conduct electricity through the coil. Because you did that, you get magnetism. And the magnetic field will pull this back up. And when you pull it back up, you broke the circuit. And the spark. No more magnetism. The gravity lets it fall back down. So it's just going up and down, up and down. No stepper, no servo. It's up down about a sixteenth of an inch. Wow. I think we're getting really close to running through there. No, I'm using water there. You need an insulating fluid around your work area when you do that. The reason for that is if you have an insulating oil surrounding your burn area, it'll restrict your burn to the size of the electrode. It'll be a tight electrode, a tight hole just the size of the electrode if you have an insulating fluid there. The problem is there's scarf created when we're burning, metal particles, and they're conducting. So when we go into a hole, a sinker hole, you'll have scarfs surrounding your electrode, and you might get shorts from the wall of the hole to the electrode. What that'll have the effect of giving you a tapered hole, a tapered ragged looking hole. So if you blow an insulating oil through the tube oh, yeah. down into the uh, airy work area and you pull that oil back up out of there, push it the scarf out, and you get a very positive hole that is circular, perfectly round, and it's consistent. You can do hole after hole and get the same thing. But EDM fluid is expensive. That's why they use EDM oil because they used to use kerosene, but it had to happen to catch a fire. They had to quit using it. But, uh, I use water because EDM fluid is really expensive. So I ran a hose from the, the laundry sink in the basement over to the milling machine. And I pump water straight down through the tubing so it blows out the bottom. You don't need a lot. You, still, you don't want a lot of pressure. Just a good flow so you flush the scarf away. And you can get a clean, consistent hole if you do that. See, this is these first holes. See how, see how clean they are on both yeah. sides uh -huh. and how small. Then as your wood gets contaminated, you start getting the erosion and it just gets it gets worse and worse. But I mean, that is a dang nice hole for a $10. Yeah. We're just burning out of town. This setup here will be fine. Pretty nice. Chuck that up in a drill press and... I mean, I got the book that that guy sold, you know, Ben, I don't know if you've heard about it or not, but... Uh, yeah, that was a few years ago. There was like a dollars worth of parts in it, I think. There was a multi-stage one in... Yeah, if you got something solid that's not going to move. Yeah, I have some stainless steel pans about that. Oh, that would be perfect. It would be perfect to put the work here. Yeah. Okay, now here's the other... This is the first one I built, and I just... Pulled it out of my ash, wild ash gas. Uh -huh. I just ran two layers of six, six to seven inches of wire here. This is uh, happens to be 14 gauge household wire, mm -hmm. and this worked fine. There was about 30 some feet of wire there, and it would work good. The problem was it started getting really hot after four or five minutes. I'm pulling too much current to there. So what it, what I did was simply run three layers instead of two. And that's what this is, it's three layers. And it's nice, it runs nice and cool. And burns a consistent hole. So it just distributes it over more copper. It just offers more resistance to the flow of current. Oh. So okay. you limit how much you pull out of the battery. If you put a piece of 10 gauge right. water okay. across this battery, it evaporates. Right, you okay, you don't have a you, you don't have a ballast anywhere. So the, the copper itself is the ballast. Everything is done so. by the coil. Yeah. You want flexible wire here on the jumper. If you have stiff wire, 
and then jump it from here to here, it'll bind uh, the action of the bobbin here. The bobbin will work through. It's going to have some flexibility. This happens to be the, the field wire off the citizen's band radio wire. All right. Full end and I have. Full action. I pulled a shield wire out of that. And it will handle high current and it's very flexible. So that was my solution for that. Well, the first. That's about something they come. Huh? I said, Chris, that's about something they come. Yeah.